Why does my chain always get tangled? Whew. Okay, I'm ready. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. This is Miggy, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. One of my followers on Instagram suggested that I should make a story time of my experience at Missed About 2017. And I thought that that was a really good idea because I want to share with you guys my experience and who knows, maybe you want to join next year's Missed About or maybe you're just nosy and just want to hear my story. So yeah, this video is going to be a story time of my experience in Missed About 2017. Let's get it started. And before I start, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the ring bell somewhere down there so that you can stay updated and know whenever I upload a new video. So without any further ado, let's get it started. A lot of people ask me, why did you want to participate in Miss Tibet? You're not even tall, you're not even skinny, can't even speak Tibetan. I wanted to join Miss Tibet 2017 because I know that I can be a good role model, not just for people in my generation, but also for older and younger, just Tibetan people in general. And I felt like if you had the crown on your head, more people listen to you. So that's a thing, but yeah, that's the main reason why I wanted to join. And also I wanted to step in the spotlight because I want others to know that not all Tibetan girls are shy and afraid. And there are others out there who are different and confident. So I wanted to step out and show you guys that being different is cool. And some of the qualifications before you do apply to go to Miss Tibet is that you need to be single you can't have any kids and you need to pay your green book so i definitely had to pay my green book uh before doing anything so i got that done bought my airplane ticket and then went to india when i first landed at the delhi airport with my sister yes my sister came with me to india oh my god you don't know how my heart felt i was so happy so excited just to smell that indian food and just seeing the indian people and also my family was waiting there for us Oh my god, I was just so happy. I was like the happiest girl ever. And I totally forgot about the competition because I was just so excited to go back to India after a couple of years. And when I got there, so me and my family, we stayed, um, I forgot what the place was called in Delhi where there was a small Tibetan settlement. We stayed over there for about two to three days. Then uh, we caught the bus to Dharamsala. Meglogonj. Meglogonj. Um, oh my god, I suck, I know. Meglogonj, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. The road to Dharamsala is just so scary. Oh my god, my heart. So we got on the bus. We got on the bus and basically everyone on the bus was Tibetan who was going to Dharamsala. It was about 7 to 8 hours to get to Dharamsala from Delhi where we were staying. And I couldn't even sleep on the bus because I was so paranoid because the road is just so dangerous. Like if you're turning right, you don't know if the car is coming or not because you can't even see. There's like no signal, no nothing in that mountain. So I was terrified. I was so paranoid that our bus was just going to crash or we're just going to fall off the mountain and die and no one's going to find us. And also like... I was looking around and everyone was snoring and sleeping because it was nighttime. And I felt like those Indian people who work in the bus were going to steal our stuff. So I was super paranoid. But eventually, I don't know how, but I fell asleep. And when I woke up, we were already here in Dharamsala. And we got our luggage and my family dropped me to Hotel Tibet because that's where all the girls were meeting. And my family, they stayed at a hotel close to a Hotel Tibet because they cannot stay with us, you know, contestants. So right when I got there... I met Yankee, she's one of our contestants. She was one of the nine contestants and she was super nice to me and I didn't know any I didn't know anyone else. And two girls were staying in each room. So she was my roommate because she's the first person I met and I didn't know anyone else. So we got our stuff down and we went upstairs in the hotel to bed because the bottom was the room and the top was like the restaurant. So um, we went up there and slowly by slowly all the girls started coming in. We introduced ourselves and everyone was extremely nice. And we were just chilling there, just eating, drinking, talking to our parents and each other uh, where, where we came from and just basically introducing ourselves and getting to know each other. And then Mr. Lopsan Wongila came and I was actually starstruck because I heard so many things about him and I can't believe that he's right in front of me. So basically he was like, hey, what's up? And we went outside and... He gave our sashes and he was like, why don't you introduce yourself? So all of us got up one by one and was just, you know, saying our name, where we came from, what we do and all that stuff. And after that, we were resting. So day number two. So day number two, we got up and we got ready and we woke up about 7 o'clock in the morning ate breakfast and it was our own responsibility to get to Dharamsala. After we got to Dharamsala, 
everything was taken care of by Mr. Lop Sawangula. The rooms, the food, everything that we ate, whenever we had to go to places, he would get cabs and taxis for us. So that was extremely nice of him. So yeah, beside uh, the plane ticket and uh, the ride to inside the Ramsala, uh, everything else was taken care taken care of by him. So yeah, on day number two, we got up, we ate, and and basically we were going to do our photo shoot at Norbalinga. So we got there and he wanted to do a group shot of all nine of us. And we were wearing a top and just chin, no chupa. So basically, I'm going to post a picture right over here somewhere. And this is a picture that he took. And the one of the things I didn't like is the fact that how he made us line up. Like there's four girls that were same height and the fat five girls that were super tall and instead of putting the five girls on the side they put the they separated the four shorter girls like two here and two here and made the five stand in the middle so when we took the picture when i saw the picture later he posted on miss tibet website i was just like you couldn't even see the us four girls on the side because we look so tiny like ants and the five girls in the middle look like superstars basically i mean I didn't know what to say at the moment because at the moment I didn't feel anything but later when I saw the picture I'm like this does not look right and then later people were sending pictures on WeChat of like memes you know like five real Miss Tibet and four bodyguards and I was hurt because I'm not sure I'm like 5'5 five five, but compared to like if you stand next to a taller person of course you're gonna look short but I would say we're like average height honestly as four girls so that's one of the things I didn't like and I wish I would have spoken up and said can we rearrange the how you lined us up because because we looked really stupid, honestly speaking, because you can't even see us. Like We're like hiding behind a tree on the side and the five girls in the middle look like supermodels. You know what I mean? So I didn't like how he arranged us in that aspect. And after we took the pictures, uh, he was really nice. He, um, Mr. Lopsan Wangila was the one who took our pictures. Uh, then we changed to Achupa and all that. So we took the pictures. It started raining a bit, but we would stop. It started, it started to rain a bit. We would stop and then when the rain stopped, we would continue again. After that, on day two, we went back to the hotel. We ate. That night is the night that we met our trainer, Tsering Chopel. He was so cool. He was around our age. And uh, for the next couple of days, we would get up and he would like make us run, ex ow, <laughs> exercise. And it was really fun actually, just hiking up the mountain early in the morning. Dramsala is just so beautiful. Oh my god. So yeah, he was trying to motiva motivate us and you know show us tips and tricks on how to stay healthy. So it was cool to meet someone like that. Um, so for the swimsuit round, Mr. Lopsan Wangula wanted to see the bikini that we bought. So he did make us try on the bikini and show it to him before the competition. And at first, us girls were just like, why does this man want to want us to wear a bikini and show him like privately, which is really weird. And I was, to be honest, I was creeped out a bit, but like we didn't tell him. We're just like, okay, this is a competition, so why not wear it? So I was a little bit nervous. I wore it, and then later, like, he saw it. He just wanted to, because he was he was telling us past experience where girls had, like, saggy bikini bottoms, and when you're walking, it just looks all flappy and looks unprofessional. So he wanted to make this pageant as professional as he can, so he wanted to check the bikini, which I understand, but I was a little bit nervous. So I wore it, and I showed him, and everything was fine. It was okay by him, so all of us girls, we had to show him the bikini, what our bikini looked like we had to wear on our body. And we felt a little bit uncomfortable, but it's whatever. And I know you guys are just wondering, the main question, is Lopsan Wangila a fraud? Did he try to touch us? Did he say anything inappropriate? Did we have to sleep with him to win? And all of that crazy story, crazy rumors that I've heard before I even went to India or before I even went to apply for Miss Tibet 2017. And the answer is no. He was not. He's like the sweetest man ever. He's just so funny. Yes, he's crazy. Yes, he does stupid, silly things. But he's so fun and so genuine and has such a nice heart. I feel like people have such a weird impression about him. And I just don't understand. He's like the coolest man ever. We go out to dinners together. He would make us laugh. We would do live on Instagram and show him. People loved him because he was different. And for sure in our Tibetan community, Tibetan people can be harsh when you, especially when you see something that is a little bit different, you make fun of them. And I don't know why you do that. It's 2017. We need to kind of like, um, get to it. The people are different. We need to accept them as they are because they're bringing something different to our community. They're bringing attention and especially that is what we need for the Tibetan community. And I, I think he's just an amazing person. So when the swimsuit round came, 
And after the swimsuit is done, the pictures of us nine girls were just all over WeChat and Facebook. And I've gotten so much messages. And one of the main questions that people ask me is, Miggy, why did you choose that swimsuit? And for me, when I was here in America, I was like, what kind of swimsuit should I buy? So I spoke to my dad and my dad was like, I understand it's a swimsuit round. But you need to understand that this is India. So try to pick something that's not too showy. I was like, okay, sure, why not? So that is why I picked this swimsuit. I'll put a picture here somewhere. And that covers up the front a bit. Because either way, we have to wear a two-piece. So I wanted to cover up a little bit in front. But when it was time to do the competition, I saw the other girls' swimsuit. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't bring a backup. So everyone was like, why are you, why are you, why are you the only one that's covered up and all of that? And honestly, that's my fault. I should have known that it was a competition and when you put yourself in this position, you might as well just give you 100%. And I wasn't and I didn't think, so it was my fault and I looked different out of all the girls. But uh, if that's one of the things that I can change, I would definitely change my swimsuit top because I just didn't, it didn't look like I fit in, like, you know? And especially, and I also, I didn't want to be one of those girls that like, she can't even speak Tibetan and now she's trying to be all that. Who's this American wannabe girl? Um, so I was trying to avoid like oh, as much controversy as I can. And I'm not saying that I would have like won if I wore like two pieces or something that showed my chest. But I'm just saying like that's just what my thought was to and that's my answer to those of you that asked me that question. After the swimsuit round the next day it was the talent and talk round. And the talk round was we would get there around 6.30 and we already knew the questions like 12 questions. And he would lay them in front of us and we would just pick and we would have 30 minutes to memorize or write on the sheet uh, the answer to that question and one by one we will go on stage and just read it or just memorize in your head like some people did and just speak and I was so nervous oh my god just I was like before I got on the stage I'm like okay relax calm down this is just like public speaking you don't need to be nervous but when I got there I started freaking sh I started shaking like I don't know if you guys can see in the videos but I was so nervous oh my god you don't even know but I felt like I did okay uh, by the way, uh, he arranged us by last name, so I was Dolma, so I was always the second one to go. And so basically after that, after I spoke, I ran in the back, I changed to my, uh, I changed to my talent round, I was dancing Barusore, and the video is uploaded on my channel, I will link that link down below, I will put that link down below in the description box, you can check it out. Um, after all that, uh, I felt like I was pretty confident with my performance and my talent uh, and talk round. So the next day, the third day was the most important. That's when we had to perform in front of hundreds of people. And I was so nervous, oh my goodness. And most of us girls, we barred our traditional round chupa from the tipa, uh, tipa school. And they were so nice, they, uh, they let us borrow it for the night. And my mom knew someone from there, so they were super helpful. Thank God, because of my parents, oh my God, they helped me so much. Day is finally here. It was time to get ready for the finale. Oh God, I was uh, so nervous. First, we had to wear our uh, white shirt and jean pants and introduce ourselves. We all basically memorized what we were gonna say, to be honest, and um, I felt like that went okay. And second, it was, what was it? The tradition? No, 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 it was not traditional round. It was a gown. So yeah, we also had to bring our own gown. We bought our own chupas and gown, all of that, heels. So uh, second round was the gown. After the gown, we would change the traditional chupa. Traditional chupa, it took about two to three people to put that chupa on because there's so many things going on. Like I was just like, oh my God, I felt so beautiful. So I remember when Mr. each year, like Mr. Lip Song picks a Tibetan song. And this year he picked Poor, and I never heard of Poor. And when I first heard it, I'm like, what kind of song is this? I was like, I don't like, oh, I wasn't a big fan. But every day we would practice, you know, the dance, Tibetan dance, and I started to really like it. I was very hip hop and Tibetan. It was very modern, so I loved it. And at the end, you know, when I was walking and I was dancing, I felt so beautiful. You don't even know how my heart felt. I felt like a princess. So uh, when the whole so when that round was finished, that's when they brought us all on stage and they announced who the winner was. And obviously, I did not win. Peldon won. So huge congrats to her. She's amazing. And honestly, like I don't want to say I wasn't sad because I came all the way from New York. I mean, it's not just me. All of us girls came from different places. So I don't want to say I only I came from New York. But I did come all the way from the states. And part of me felt like yeah, like I. 
like, yeah, I deserve the crown. Yeah, I would make a good role model. And I felt like... I felt devastated after on stage like obviously you have a smile you don't want to cry and run off the stage so, but I was smiling on stage I was happy for the winners but when I got back there I just couldn't hold it in I'm just so emotional I'm cancer by the way so cancers are super emotional and I started crying and my dad was like it's okay don't cry don't cry and my little sister was like she started crying too because she just is so cute and she just so supportive even though she's seven years old so I cried and then later I was just like you know what this is a part of life. Maybe this wasn't in my destiny, in my fate to win Miss Tibet 2017. After when Miss Tibet happened, um, I was in the backstage. I was just, you know, taking pictures with Mariko and Sangye, Miss Tibet 2016. That's when uh, Nobu Shambhala came up to me. He was just like, I'm such a huge fan of you. Would you be in my music video? And I was like, yes, of course. Then I was so happy again. So the next day after all of that, I got all my stuff and I went to sleep in my family's hotel. And the next day I went and did the music video and the music video link will be down below Namazema. i'm sure you guys have heard of the song it's an old song but he wanted to make a new music video out of it and he's an amazing singer so guys do check out his channel i will post everything down below one of the things i didn't like is the fact that the three judges that we had were all indians so i felt like especially if you were singing a tibetan song or dancing to tibetan song that was a little disadvantage because they didn't understand what you were saying or doing you know so if you were dancing to Indian songs or English songs or dancing or singing in general I feel like you were a little bit ahead because they don't speak Tibetan so that's something that I didn't like they should have added a Tibetan judge but beside that Lopsa Wongila was a super sweet to me and was helping me out with any questions that I had that I asked him because he knew that I came all the way from America and plus I didn't know much about the Ramsala and I don't speak that much that well of a Tibetan and he was just super accommodating to all of us girls and he didn't lie or cheat or made Peldon win or made us girl lose it was not like that it was a competition there will always be one winner and uh, that's it. I just had so much fun going to Dharamsala and just seeing my family and getting to meet so many exciting new different people that this whole experience in like five, ten years and when I look back, I'm just going to just cherish this moment forever in my heart because it taught me so much and from Miss Tibet, I did gain a good amount of publicity and more Tibetan people know me and that's my goal. I want to make an impact on Tibetan community whether that's from doing makeup or doing YouTube videos. I just want to be part of the community and my Tibetan might not be the best but I'm still trying and I want you guys to be patient with me and know that I love all my supporters who support me and send me sweet messages on my Instagram and YouTube because you guys make me feel like I'm doing something right and all the love that you show me I will cherish in my heart forever and I will keep going and keep making you guys proud one advice I would like to give to all my followers is that no matter what you want to do no matter what your heart wants to do do a hundred percent don't let the fear stop you from accomplishing your goals there's only one of you and you're special you're different so block out all the negativity and all those haters out there and just do what makes you happy girl Thank you all so much for watching my story time and make sure don't forget to subscribe down there now and I will see you guys in my next video. Love you.